It's been 65 years since she first rocked around the Christmas tree, but now Brenda Lee is back. Rocking around the Christmas tree at the Christmas party hop. Brenda Lee's dynamic voice propelled her to the top of the charts. Her timeless hit, Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree, is just one piece of her impressive musical legacy. Yet behind her powerful vocals and undeniable stage presence lies a life marked by hardships. Join us as we delve into the triumphs, the heartbreaks, and the enduring legacy of Brenda Lee, a star born from hardship. Brenda Lee emerged from difficult beginnings marked by poverty to become one of the biggest musical stars of her era. She was born Brenda May Tarpley on December 11, 1944 in Atlanta, Georgia, into a family that faced constant hardship and deprivation. Her father, Reuben Lindsay Tarpley, struggled to find consistent work, forcing the family to move frequently between Atlanta, Augusta, and wherever he could get odd jobs. The Tarpleys lived an existence of deep poverty, without even basic essentials like running water in their homes. As a child, Brenda shared a bed with her siblings and had little in the way of material comforts. The Tarpley children learned resourcefulness early on, going to the candy store to sing for pennies to buy treats. Even as a toddler, Brenda's extraordinary singing voice drew attention, winning candy and coins from delighted store patrons. Music became a bright spot in the Tarpley's challenging lives through the battery-powered radio that fascinated little Brenda. And it was in church that her vocal talents first emerged, as she sang solos every Sunday to the swelling pride of her family. Though only a small country chapel, it was a stage on which Brenda could shine. But it was a tragedy that forced young Brenda into a breadwinning role. When she was just six years old, her father was killed in a work accident, leaving the family completely destitute. With her mother taking on back-breaking work in a cotton mill, Brenda felt she had to contribute. She started using her precocious talent to bring in money, singing at local events and gatherings. Brenda's music became a lifeline for the Tarpleys, supplementing their meager income. Soon, she was winning local talent contests that earned her appearances on fledgling Atlanta radio and TV programs. Though barely school age, Brenda approached her new job with maturity, working to polish her stage presence and vocal skills. By the time she turned 10, Brenda was the primary breadwinner for her struggling family. It was a massive responsibility for someone so young, but Brenda was up to the task. She toured the Georgia countryside, performing anywhere she could. One early supporter was country music TV star Red Foley, who invited the pint-sized songbird to appear on his program, Ozark Jubilee. On that show, a star was born. Brenda's explosive vocals on songs like Jambalaya earned her the nickname Little Miss Dynamite. She soon signed a recording contract with Decca Records and launched to stardom essentially overnight. Through talent, grit, and necessity, Brenda Lee found her calling. Her impoverished upbringing cultivated resiliency and perseverance that paved the way for her meteoric rise. Rather than see her childhood as limiting, Brenda made the most of it, letting music lift her family out of despair. Little Girl, Big Voice Brenda Lee's road to fame may have been fueled by need, but it was her prodigious natural singing talent that captured the world's attention. From early childhood, Brenda possessed a vocal ability exceeding her years. It was a gift noticed by those around her, even if its full potential was yet unknown. According to Lee's own recollections, she could pick up and perfectly sing melodies after hearing them just twice by the age of three. This faculty astonished her mother and sister, who would bring Brenda to the local candy store just to show off her knack for song to delighted customers. Even as a toddler, her voice was nuanced emotive, and dazzlingly mature. By the time she was five, Brenda was winning talent contests around Atlanta, earning both prize money for her struggling family and local notice. Here was a girl with pipes well beyond her little frame, but Brenda polished her talent with dedication too. She sang at their local Baptist church from a young age, gaining experience shaping her voice around gospel songs and hymns. The response was so positive that church members urged Brenda's mother to put her gifts on greater display. From age six, Brenda entered every talent contest she could, realizing she had a gift that could lift up her family. In one competition sponsored by local schools, Brenda took first prize, a performance on an Atlanta radio broadcast. This launched a year of weekly appearances that gave her priceless exposure. It was while watching country singer Red Foley and his barn dance show that Brenda's destiny snapped into focus. She turned down a paying gig just for the chance to perform for Foley. Her instincts were right. 
Foley was so blown away by her vocals that he immediately invited the 10-year-old to appear on his national TV show, Ozark Jubilee. Her breakthrough came when performing Jambalaya with polish and pizzazz that amazed Foley and audiences. Brenda knew she had the talent, and she finally had the opportunity. From that moment on, her stardom was never in doubt. Throughout her youth, Brenda Lee's natural vocal brilliance may have been unrefined, but it was undeniable. She learned to mold that raw talent through constant performing and honing her craft. By matching her gifted pipes with dedication, Brenda went from winning candies in a corner store to winning the hearts of music fans worldwide. Her talent blazed a trail to fame and fortune, but it was a gift she worked tirelessly to share. Tragedy turns talent into responsibility. When her father tragically died in 1953, a young Brenda Lee was faced with a responsibility no child should have to bear. As the eldest child, it fell on her shoulders to become the family's sole breadwinner. Armed with a once-in-a-generation singing talent, Brenda stepped up to support her destitute family during their darkest hour. After her father's passing, Brenda's mother had no choice but to labor in a cotton mill from sunup to sundown just to scrape by. As the Tarpley's only other source of income, Brenda and her musical talents became essential to their survival. This was a crushing burden for a 10-year-old girl, but Brenda showed maturity beyond her years. She leaned on her experience singing locally and on small Atlanta radio and TV shows, using it to book increasingly bigger opportunities. The money she earned became vital to preventing the Tarpleys from becoming homeless. Brenda accepted that it was now her job to support her family. She traveled throughout Georgia, performing on any stage that would have her. Audiences marveled hearing such a powerful voice erupt from a petite little girl. Soon, Brenda became the primary act on the Atlanta country music program, TV Ranch. Though extremely young, she conducted herself professionally, working diligently on her stage presence and musicality. The stakes were raised exponentially when country superstar Red Foley took an interest in young Brenda after hearing her sing. An appearance on his national show, Ozark Jubilee, introduced her to the world. World. Practically overnight, Brenda Lee became a star, inking a record deal with Decca. While most kids her age were attending school dances, Brenda was booking big money concerts and television appearances. She spent her adolescence touring, recording hit songs, managing media appearances, and sending much of her earnings back home. Brenda accepted this duty with maturity and pride. Her talent and drive lifted her family out of destitution. While still holding on to her youthful spirit, Brenda tackled grown-up responsibilities to carry her loved ones through their darkest times. Though just a young girl, she forged herself into the head of the household through strength and love. Brenda Lee's Big Break At just 10 years old, Brenda Lee found herself at a career crossroads that would shape the rest of her life. She chose to pass on much-needed money to instead meet her idol, country star Red Foley. That fateful decision opened doors that launched her career. In 1955, Brenda's family had relocated to Cincinnati, putting her Atlanta music connections in peril. But a chance to perform on radio with country singer Jimmy Skinner kept her in the spotlight. When the homesick family moved back to Atlanta, Brenda pursued every performance, believing her big break was coming. It arrived in the form of Red Foley, a country giant who hosted the national TV show Ozark Jubilee. When his tour came to Atlanta, a local DJ persuaded a reluctant Foley to see 10-year-old Brenda perform. She chose meeting Foley over earning $336 that day, nearly $3,400 today. Brenda blew Foley away with her rendition of Jambalaya, displaying vocal chops and stage presence that belied her age. An astonished Foley immediately invited Brenda to perform on Ozark Jubilee. Her breakout national TV appearance electrified audiences. Almost overnight, Brenda Lee became a star. The powerhouse rendition of Jambalaya earned her a recording contract with Decca Records. Soon after, her song Dynamite became a smash hit on both the country and pop charts. Red Foley's interest changed everything for the young aspiring singer. In a single performance, Brenda proved she had the talent to become a big star. Thanks to Foley's belief in her, the world finally got to experience the enormous voice and presence of little Brenda Lee. That day paved the way for a legendary career. Brenda's gamble to meet her hero, rather than take a big payday, paid off in ways she couldn't imagine. All it took was four minutes on stage to change her life forever. From that first thunderous jambalaya, Brenda Lee never looked back, launching decades of stardom. The contract that held Brenda Lee back. On the cusp of superstardom in the late 1950s, teen sensation Brenda Lee found her career stalled by an early contract. 
At the very peak of her ascendance, she discovered bigger opportunities just out of reach due to a restrictive deal signed by her mother years before. The roots of the problem reached back to 1956, when Brenda first appeared on Red Foley's Ozark Jubilee show. Her powerful performance earned national attention and a five-year contract with the program. However, her manager and mother hadn't scrutinized its restrictive terms. Just months into her breakout success, Brenda tried signing with other labels offering lucrative deals, but she remained bound to the Ozark Jubilee contract. ABC and her then-manager Jack Gillette blocked these attempts to advance her career. By 1957, 15-year-old Brenda was America's fastest-rising new star, with hits like Dynamite and One Step at a Time. But she was hemmed in by Ozark Jubilee's low pay and limited exposure. Huge opportunities beckoned, yet the restrictive contract remained a barrier. Frustrated but unbowed, Brenda fought back. Her new manager, Dub Albritton, filed a lawsuit against Ozark Jubilee in 1957, claiming the contract had not been properly executed. After months in court, Brenda won her freedom. The legal victory came at an ideal time, freeing her to sign a recording deal with Decca Records. It proved a pivotal moment, as Decca launched Brenda into international pop stardom. But for a frustrating season, an ill-advised early contract nearly derailed her career before it could properly start. Thanks to her tenacity and her lawyer's skills, Brenda broke out of a situation that could have seriously stifled her career. The lesson learned was to carefully review any deal before signing. Brenda ended up exactly where she belonged, as one of the world's brightest new stars. Rise to Pop Stardom when she signed with Decca Records, everything clicked into place for Brenda Lee. With her career finally under her control, she developed into an unstoppable hit-making force. Her first Decca single, One Step at a Time, became an instant top 40 pop hit and top 10 country hit in 1957. But it was only the beginning, as Brenda rattled off an unprecedented string of nine consecutive top 10 Billboard pop hits between 1960 and 1962. Songs like Sweet Nothings, I Want to Be Wanted, Emotions, You Can Depend on Me, and Fool Number no. One dominated both radio airplay and sales charts. The earworm melodies and Brenda's powerhouse vocals proved irresistible to pop audiences, but the song that propelled her to icon status was the 1960s I'm Sorry. It was Brenda's first million-selling gold single, spending multiple weeks at number one on the Billboard Hot 100. The aching ballad underscored her vocal maturity at age 15. Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree also became a classic after finally catching fire upon re-release in 1960. Its twangy guitar riffs and Brenda's rockabilly vocals made it an instant holiday staple. Decca Records allowed Brenda the freedom to develop into a versatile artist and hit machine. Her years under contract produced some of the most enduring pop crossover anthems of the early rock era. Thanks to Decca, Brenda Lee had the platform to share her prodigious talent with the world. Evergreen Holiday Hit in a recording session that would forever change her career, 13-year-old Brenda Lee cut a soon-to-be Christmas classic song in the summer of 1958. Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree became Brenda's signature holiday hit and one of the most enduring yuletide pop songs of all time. The song was written by Johnny Marks, who had penned other hits like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Brenda's producer Owen Bradley thought it would be a perfect vehicle for her rockabilly style featuring a prominent twanging guitar by Hank Garland and a lively solo by Boots Randolph, Brenda brought an energetic, straight-ahead rock sound to the jaunty tune. Her youthful exuberance was perfect for a Christmas pop song that became an instant seasonal favorite upon its release that November. However, Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree didn't actually become a hit until its re-release in 1960, after Brenda had become a superstar. The song steadily grew in popularity each holiday season, eventually selling over 5 million copies. Marked by Brenda's signature vocals, it embodied the joyous spirit of Christmas. Today, Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree remains a staple of holiday music playlists around the world. It has charted repeatedly on Billboard in the decades since and has been featured prominently in numerous films, TV shows, and commercials. The song has become synonymous with Brenda Lee, despite being recorded when she was barely a teenager. While Brenda recorded many hit singles in her illustrious career, none capture the merry warmth of the season like her iconic Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree. That two-minute summer recording session produced a song that timelessly evokes the Christmas mood for generations of listeners. Now nearing 60 years after its release, it stands as Brenda's most indelible contribution to popular music. Finding Fame Abroad 
A fascinating aspect of Brenda Lee's career is that she became a star in the United Kingdom before achieving fame back home in America. With her rockabilly style, Brenda first found an audience overseas that propelled her to appearances and chart success starting in 1959. At just 14, an age when most young performers were limited to local venues, Brenda was already touring the UK. She appeared on British television programs months before her American breakthrough. Her first UK single release, Sweet Nothings, reached the top five on Britain's music charts in the early 1960s. The song wouldn't become a hit in America for another six months. Other recordings like Let's Jump the Broomstick and Speak to Me Pretty also saw success overseas before making an impact stateside. On her early 1960s tours of England, Brenda played sold-out shows backed by top British acts like The Bachelors and Sounds Incorporated. She was a featured headliner at the famed London Palladium Theatre and venues across the country. By 1962, songs like Speak To Me Pretty and Here Comes That Feeling had reached the UK top five, while still just album cuts in her native US Brenda's special connection with British audiences helped drive her emerging stardom. In retrospect, the UK was the perfect place for the rock, pop, and country blend of Brenda's early career to catch fire. Her music was heavily promoted there by Decca Records. By the time she achieved major American success, Brenda was already a star in Britain. That loyal overseas fan base sustained her popularity well into later decades. Brenda retained a special bond with the UK that started with Britain embracing her talent first, a fascinating wrinkle as her legend grew worldwide. Balancing love and limelight. At the height of her fame as a teenager in the early 1960s, Brenda Lee found balance and refuge from the spotlight in marriage and motherhood. Her 1963 wedding to Ronnie Shacklett and subsequent birth of their two daughters gave her focus away from her public life. Just 18 years old, Brenda's wedding to 20-year-old Ronnie came as a surprise to fans, as she had shunned dating to concentrate on her career. But a backstage meeting bloomed into a romance and quick engagement. Still, Brenda kept the nuptials private, marrying quietly in Nashville with only family and friends present. Content to avoid the media glare, Brenda maintained a happy, low-key marriage and family life, even while touring the world as a major star. In 1964, she gave birth to her first child, daughter Jolie, followed by daughter Julie in 1965. Close friends like country legend Dolly Parton recalled Brenda treasuring time off stage. As a wife and mother at home sewing dresses, cooking meals and generally avoiding the spotlight. While a world-famous performer, at heart she preferred quiet family time. Brenda also balanced her celebrity and home life by taking her children with her while touring when possible. She strived to give them structure between stops on the road. Later, as her career slowed down, Brenda took satisfaction in being able to focus more on her family. Despite the pressures of fame, she carved out a normal life as a loving mother. Brenda Lee never let her career eclipse the private joys of marriage and raising children. Unbreakable spirit, triumph over health battles. Throughout her legendary six-decade career, Brenda Lee has faced numerous serious health issues that threatened both her life and her ability to sing. But time and again, she has persevered through these challenges with remarkable resilience to return to performing for adoring audiences worldwide. While still only 15 years old and at the apex of her meteoric teen pop stardom, Lee collapsed on stage from sheer exhaustion in New York. The non-stop pace of touring, recording, and media appearances had finally caught up with her. Though eager to get back in front of crowds, Lee took doctor-ordered rest to recover her strength. Far more dire was a terrifying hospitalization in 1972 when Lee was just 27, after a blood clot developed in the large vena cava vein that returned blood to the heart. Lee's life hung in the balance before emergency surgery managed to successfully remove the clot. The health scare nearly led her to an early retirement. Later in the 1970s, Lee had to overcome a bout of vocal cord nodules that compromised her ability to sing with precision and stamina. But through rigorous vocal training and exercises, she rebuilt the strength and flexibility of her voice. She also trooped on performing despite suffering a broken foot in an on-stage fall in Las Vegas in 1981. But perhaps the most worrisome vocal challenge emerged in the late 1990s when Lee was in her mid-50s. Doctors discovered growths called vocal cord cysts that risked ending her singing career if fully removed by surgery. After delicate procedures to partially excise them, Lee chose further voice rest over surgery to preserve her instrument, hoping the cysts would not lead to permanent vocal cord paralysis. Now nearing 80, 
Through timely medical intervention and personal determination, Brenda Lee still possesses the soaring, emotive voice that has spellbound fans across pop, rock, and country for over six decades. Her perseverance through potentially career-ending and life-threatening medical issues serves as an inspiration. Above all, Lee has proven that her defining trait is an indomitable inner strength to overcome the many hazards that have threatened both her voice and her life throughout her storied performing career. In addition to her own health battles, Lee has been an active philanthropist for medical causes, particularly those focused on developing childhood disease treatments and serving critically ill children. She has been an ardent supporter of the Vanderbilt Voice Center, recognizing the care needed to protect and restore the human voice. Lee also founded the Brenda Lee Foundation for Pediatric Research benefiting St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Lee's perseverance was put to perhaps its toughest test in 1999, when her beloved mother and steadfast supporter, Annie Grace Yarborough, passed away at age 79 after struggling with a heart condition. Her mother was by her side from childhood poverty through teen stardom. But Lee found the strength to deliver a moving capella performance of Amazing Grace at the funeral in tribute. Homecoming to Country After becoming a global pop sensation as a teenager in the 1960s, Brenda Lee increasingly felt the urge to return to her original musical roots in country and gospel music. As the fervor around rock and pop eased in the late 1960s and early 1970s, Brenda took stock of her career and decided to make a bold move. She left behind the pop world that had made her famous and reinvented herself as a country artist. This transition did not come without risk. She was stepping back from the mainstream pop audience that knew her for iconic songs like I'm Sorry and Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree. But creatively, Brenda felt country music was her true home. The genre's storytelling and emotional directness resonated with her in a way pop music no longer did. Having grown up singing gospel and country in the American South, she wanted to reconnect with those roots. In 1972, Lee signed with MCA Nashville, aligned with legendary producer Owen Bradley, and began work on her first country album in years. Recording in Nashville with renowned session musicians felt like coming home. The album's first single release, Nobody Wins, written by Chris Christopherson, shot to the top five on the Billboard country charts in 1973. Its reflective lyrics and Lee's nuanced vocals announced her return. Over the next several years, Lee racked up a steady string of top 20 country hits, including Sunday Sunrise, Wrong Ideas, and Big Four Poster Bed. In 1975, her song He's My Rock became her first number one country hit in over 20 years. Though she never quite reached the pop chart success of her teen years, Lee found fulfillment in once again calling country music her primary genre. She collaborated with many country legends both on stage and in the recording studio during the 1970s, including Willie Nelson, Dolly Parton, Loretta Lynn, Conway Twitty, and George Jones. Her 1984 duet with Jones on the single Hallelujah I Love Her So earned Lee her final taste of chart success. While country radio airplay proved more elusive by the late 70s, she continued touring theaters nationwide to her loyal fan base. Commercially, Lee's return to the country plateaued after the early 1970s, but creatively, it allowed her to embrace the music and storytelling style she felt most passionately about. Though it came at the cost of pop chart fame, Lee followed her artistic heart. Singing country represented a triumph of spirit over commerce. Forever, Little Miss Dynamite. While Brenda Lee is not as prolific as during her chart-topping heyday, she has remained an active presence and revered elder stateswoman in the country music community. Though semi-retired, Lee frequently lends her legendary status to supporting promising new artists and furthering key institutions of country music. Lee's enduring influence is evident through her long-standing role as a judge on the panel that selects new members for the prestigious Country Music Hall of Fame. She herself was inducted into the Hall of Fame back in 1997 in honor of her pioneering contributions to country music. Each year at the nationally televised announcement ceremony, Lee proudly announces the next class of Hall of Fame inductees, sharing her wisdom and experience with new generations of country artists and fans. In another major milestone recognizing her groundbreaking career, Lee received a Lifetime Achievement Grammy Award in 2009, commemorating her success across country, pop, and rock music. Proving her staying power, her signature holiday song, Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree, also returned to the Billboard charts the same year when Lee was 75 years old, reminding the world of her timeless talent. 
While she no longer tours regularly, Lee makes special appearances singing duets with contemporary country stars at awards shows and industry celebrations. These performances allow her to pass the torch to younger artists following in her footsteps. She's collaborated on stage with Leanne Rimes, Winona Judd, Casey Musgraves, Jana Kramer, and many others, graciously welcoming new worthy successors. Now nearly eight decades into her storied career, Brenda Lee remains beloved by fans young and old for her enduring talent and warm personality. By mentoring promising young musicians and participating in events that celebrate the country's rich heritage, she retains an active presence as the genre's living legacy. Though she could easily retire after an astonishing 60-plus year career, Lee chooses to stay engaged out of her love for the music community. By committing herself to causes bigger than just her own legend, she ensures that all she's built continues to thrive for decades to come. Though the spotlight has dimmed, Brenda Lee's voice still rings out, now using her fame to lift others to their own great heights. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.